So we are talking actor director combos that we'd like to see. Um, uh, like we did before, uh, these are actors and directors who haven't worked together yet and that we'd like to see together. So even if, you know, even if it was like a way, long time ago, you can't put those two together because they've already done it. So uh, Nathan, kick us off. Do you? Yeah, uh, just a couple of things. You know, I personally think casting is is very interesting. I love seeing the rumors, seeing who people are going to work with. You know, if they announce they're making a new XYZ movie, I'm so interested in who they're going to get to direct, who they're going to get to star, if I think this person's going to fit that role or not. So fan casting and pairing people up is is great. And a director and a star is probably the most crucial pairing uh, for your film. So this is just so exciting. I had a lot of fun doing this. Um, so we'll go at least, I, I plan on going from my least favorite of the five that I picked to my most favorite if it were to happen. And like Phoenix said, they can't have worked together. So Samuel L. Jackson had this tiny role in Goodfellas directed by Martin Scorsese, but they still work together. Right. You can't do that, you yep. know, things like that. So we wanted to do people that don't work together. And we tried to pick people that weren't just, oh, Christian Bale's my favorite actor. David Fincher is my favorite director. I want to see them work together because I like them. No. We try to pick things that we actually can put logic behind and, and things like that. So I decided to choose none of the same directors that I used from last time, uh, which was David Fincher, Spike Lee, Martin Scorsese, Damien Chazelle, and Greta Gerwig. So completely new set of directors because, you know, it's a big world out there. Um, nonetheless, I'll kick off my list with Ryan Coogler. Obviously a, a huge name on the rise right now for everything he has done. I know he's very busy right now with Black Panther 2, but sometime down the line, I would love to see him work with John David Washington. <laughs> I would love to see this, um, even though I have a bad taste in my mouth about JDW because of Tenet. That is not his fault. It's not his fault, but I still have a bad taste in my mouth because of it. Um, the protagonist. <laughs> yes, I. This would be higher on my list had I loved Tenant. I didn't. That's unfortunate. Um, still, love me some John David Washington. I'm a big fan of him in the show Ballers, which where he got his start. Um, obviously, I think he was fantastic in Black Klansman. And seeing what Ryan Coogler has been able to do with these young black actors, specifically Chadwick Boseman and Michael B. Jordan, John David Washington fits that billing perfectly. He's young. He's on the rise. And whatever story Ryan Coogler decides to tell, um, obviously he, he loves telling stories about the struggle of black people. Um, if he decides to tell another story like that, I think John David Washington definitely fits that billing. You stole one of my picks. <laughs> it, was it was exactly that? It was that? exactly Ryan Let's Coogler. Let's go. And, and John David Washington. So that was go. one of the ones I couldn't decide if I wanted to put it in my top five. So since you, you, you have it, I'm gonna let it go. Uh, Nick, go ahead. What's, what's your first pairing? Yeah, um, so Nathan mentioned somebody that I'm gonna mention in this, and that's Michael B. Jordan. Mm. Um, you know, he very famously has worked with Ryan Coogler in Fruitvale Station, and obviously in, in Black Panther. In Creed. Um, in Creed. Um, but I think he would be fantastic working with another actor on the rise and or director on the rise and that's Jordan Peele. Nice. Jordan Peele <laughs> has directed two horror films. Um, whether he stays in that that genre or kind of moves towards dramas is still to to kind of be unseen. His latest projects like Candyman, um, which he's helping produce and uh, I forget the show that he's producing right now. Twilight Town. I don't Town. remember. Twilight Town. Yes, but there's another one. Um, I have all kind of been in the horror genre. Um, but if he steps out of the horror genre or if Michael B. Jordan steps into the horror genre, I'd love to see the both of them work together. I think that'd be sweet. See, now you just took one of my directors. <laughs> I did not have him paired with Michael B. Jordan, though, but 
I'm, I'm not sure gonna... we all I'm sure we all picked similar yeah. directors. Similar directors. So uh I'm gonna jump around here. I don't I didn't have mine ranked, but I'm gonna see which one I can kick off with, and I think I'm gonna go with this one. Uh so I love both of these people and I think they could do magic together. Um I the actor is Jesse Buckley. Uh Jesse Buckley, who was in uh I'm Thinking of Ending Things, uh was also in one of my favorite movies of last year, uh Wild Rose. Incredible actress, uh great singer, also. I know I didn't know she had a great voice. Uh, and I am pairing her with Ryan Johnson. I think what Ryan Johnson does uh, as a director, I think he's great with female uh, uh, front as uh, lead actresses. So I think he can bring something out uh, with Jesse. I think that'll just be a perfect match for those two. Um, and I like me personally, I would love it if it was either like a murder mystery movie or a musical i think either one he would hit pretty well with jesse as the front so that's that's my first pairing ryan johnson and jesse buckley i think it's better than your ryan johnson macaulay culkin one from last time oh no that's genius that That is brilliant (laughs) um my next one features a moderately popular female director there's not very many female directors right now which is an absolute shame and that is quickly changing with several female directors making projects right now that we've yet to see so in a year I'll have more popular female directors to choose from and I used Greta Gerwig last time and I didn't want to use any of the same people Um, so I went with Patty Jenkins who Mm. is most notably directing Wonder Woman and she directed something called Monster which I haven't seen that has good reviews but outside of that, in Wonder Woman, she hasn't done anything. So she is very much a director that I think is still on the rise, finding her footing. And if she's not going to direct a superhero movie, it might be a struggle to get people out to the box office just because she's not established yet. So I wanted to pair Patty Jenkins with a lead that could bring people out. And I think that lead is Emma Stone. Mm. Um, obviously, she is an award-winning actress, one of my favorite actresses, but regardless, she's an award-winning actress. She's been in several films that are eye-opening. She can be dramatic. She can be funny. And whatever Patty Jenkins wants to do, I think Emma Stone fits that bill pretty well. Like I said, Patty Jenkins has not directed anything necessarily big other than Wonder Woman, so if she gets her first shot at a, at a non-superhero role, I think she would just need a, a pretty big name to help lure people to the theater. Um, and I think Emma Stone's that person. I like that pairing. I do. I do. I think that's a good fit. I'm curious. Uh, if it's not a superhero movie, what do you think it would be? I just, I don't know her style enough. I mm-hmm. would hope it was a drama. I think that, but, but I just don't know. I haven't seen anything Patty Jenkins has done other than Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. So I, I can't confidently say she does this good, she does that bad. Um, but Emma Stone can do anything that we know. And uh, I'd just like to see what Patty Jenkins does. That would be an interesting mix. Okay, no, Nick, what about you? Cool. Um, so I have a, a newfound love for this person. Um, she's in one of my favorite movies, uh, Three Billboards. And we just recently watched Fargo and Blood Simple, <laughs> um, which she is the, the star of. And that's Frances McDormand. Um, fantastic actress. Um, super excited for, for Nomadland and Chloe Zhao. Um, but I have her paired with another female director, and, and Nathan's already mentioned Greta Gerwig. Um, so I think she'd be great with Greta Gerwig. Um, Greta so far only done two films, and they've kind of been coming of age films. Um, she's supposed to direct Barbie with Margot Robbie coming up here soon. Um, so I don't know how to feel about that one. <laughs> um, but I think the, the two of them doing a, a drama would be fantastic. Um, Greta's nailed the drama so far in her two films. And Francis McDormand's a very dramatic actress. Um, plays that very well and has won two Best Actress awards. So 
I would love to see that pairing. That's a solid one. Uh, I'm mad I didn't even think of uh, Francis McDormand. That, that makes me mad. Um, <laughs> so uh, Nathan mentioned female directors. I have four female directors on my list of 13 because I, I couldn't stop pairing any uh, people. But I have four female directors. Uh, and one that I really want to see is uh, Olivia Wilde who uh, just recently did one, my probably my favorite comedy of 2019, which was Booksmart. Uh, and I paired her with Sam Rockwell. I think they would be a brilliant, brilliant mix. Sam Rockwell is insanely good. He, he, he did comedy for long before he did drama and he excels in both, um, I think. And Olivia Wilde excels in, in both as well. I think he would make an excellent antagonist in a, in a movie for her. And I want to throw in something special. If you pair that director with that actor, I want Taika Waititi to write the script. <laughs> I feel like that would be a very interesting mix. Obviously, Sam has worked with Taika before in Jojo Rabbit. I think he did excellent work there. Again, blending comedy and drama. I think the put all three together, that's a perfect match. So Olivia Wilde and Sam Rockwell for me. And those two did work together um, in Richard Jewell, both as actors. So oh, Olivia Wilde has not directed, <laughs> directed Sam, Sam, right? but they have worked together um, ah. in Richard Jewell. Loophole. But, <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. It's, it's fine. At least... Some familiarity with each other, which we know is huge in Hollywood, familiarity. Yeah. But um, love that we all went with, with female directors. There absolutely needs to be more representation in that department. Um, my third one um, features a director that I'm excited to see more of. I've only seen one of his films, but all of his films are highly rated. And this is maybe the most genre-specific <laughs> actor, or excuse me, director in Hollywood, and that's Yorgos Lanthimos, mm. um, director of The Lobster, Killing of a Sacred Deer, the a favorite. couple others. Mm -hmm. The Favorite, excuse me, yes. Mm -hmm. um, he is very specific in what he tries to do. All of his actors in his movies seem to be robotic mm -hmm. and just odd, odd performances. Um, and someone who I think would absolutely pull this off and just be a stud in the lead role for what Yorgos is typically looking for is Florence Pugh. Nice. She, <laughs> obviously, I have not seen Midsommar. I am aware of how weird Midsommar is. Um, having not seen that movie, I still know that she, Florence Pugh, can handle stuff like that, and Midsommar and what Yorgos does are similar. Um, and I just think she is so talented. Another actress on the rise, uh, just talking about like John David Washington, one of my picks a, a few minutes ago. Um, Florence Pugh could pull this off, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of Yorgos' movies. Obviously, Yorgos has, has directed a um, Oscar-winning actress in Olivia Coleman. So, yes, this, this would get me excited. Yeah, I have uh, Florence Pugh paired with a different director, but I like that as well. Uh, Nick, what about you? Um, so I've only seen one of this director's movies, um, and we're kind of split on how we all feel about that movie. Um, and that director is Charlie Kaufman, oh. <laughs> um, with, um, I'm thinking of ending things. And that was just such like a, a weird vibe to a movie, such like a gritty and, and dark and, and, you know, this, this emotion movie. And I think a, an actor that would just work very well with that is Adam Driver. Mm. Um, Adam Driver just brings emotion. Um, when you look at like Marriage Story, I haven't seen Black Klansman yet, but he's in that. He's great, man. Um, so I think these two would, would just work together on, on the emotional front and, and the dramatic side as well. We can get some Adam Driver yelling more as well. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, okay, doke. 
So I am going to uh, mention someone uh, I don't think has been mentioned yet. No. Um, okay. This is a weird pairing, but you know, me personally, I feel like these two people, their styles uh, match up tremendously well. Uh, I think, you know, I think the movie that they would make would be painfully obvious uh, and it would it would be also amazing. You guys know how I feel about Chicago. That is one of my favorite movies because uh, I love movie musicals. So I paired Rob Marshall, who was the director of Chicago, with Anne Hathaway, who was the star of Les Mis. And so like, obviously, it's a musical. I think it, they would kill it. I think it would just be a spectacle to see. That's that's my pairing, Rob Marshall and Hathaway. Mm. I can definitely see it. I can yeah. definitely see the witches star Anne Hathaway with <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides star Rob Marshall. Um, <laughs> that definitely sounds good. That, that, that is a match made in heaven. <laughs> Especially with the, the standout directing in on Stranger Tides and the standout performance in The Witches. That sounds, exactly. that sounds great. It's, 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 it's a match. It's a perfect match. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. It'd be um, a hilarious okay. movie. So um, throughout my list so far, I, I've picked award winners in Emma Stone. I've picked people on the rise, Ryan Coogler, JDW, Florence Pugh. Um, not this time. For my second most anticipated on this list, I'm going with two people that are extremely established and um, Phoenix is going to love on this choice so much. And I love it because I would get excited if this was announced as well. Going with Barry Jenkins. Mm. Um, another director who I've only seen one of his films, obviously Moonlight. Um, but I really enjoyed that. I think the story he was telling was just incredible. And specifically seeing what he was able to do with Mahershala Ali and this mentor figure and when you think of a mentor figure, I want to see Barry Jenkins write this script with a strong mentor for whom, whatever story he's trying to tell, he needs a, a father-like figure, a wise guy. And when you think of who fits that billing, there's got to be one name on the top of that list, and that's Morgan Freeman. Mm, I think nice. whatever script maybe you tell it with, I don't think Morgan Freeman should be the star necessarily, but he should be the supporter for a teenager, a young man, mm. whatever story they're trying to tell, Morgan Freeman can definitely be that wise father figure, influencer. And I just think that would work perfectly because more, uh, because Barry Jenkins wrote Mahershala Ali so well as the mentor, Morgan Freeman can pull that off with ease. Nice, nice pair. Cool. I like that. Yeah, you're right. I am gonna love that. <laughs> I love I love Barry Jenkins' work. So like like you, I didn't I didn't add him on this one because I did it I used him last time, but uh yeah. It, anything Barry Jenkins does, I'm gonna probably love. Go ahead, Nick. Um so I have somebody who is also an award winner um with these two pairings. So the actor would be Joaquin Phoenix. Um, I think he nailed the role of Joker and something that Joaquin is known for is really just getting into character, um, gaining weight, losing weight, looking different ways um, for a specific character. And I think somebody who writes characters very well, when you look at uh, Christoph Waltz in Inglourious Bastards or Rick Dalton and Cliff Booth in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and that's Quentin Tarantino. He nice. has these dark and gritty characters, and I think Joaquin Phoenix perfectly aligns with the characters that Tarantino writes, and I would love to see them in a pairing together. Yeah, yeah. See, I didn't use Quentin either because I used him last time, but that's perfect. Well, this is my first time, so I get yeah. those, those good pairings. That is a great pairing. Uh, oh, it, and <laughs> re not recycling is just something that we wanted to do. We we didn't yeah. we didn't even discuss it. Phoenix. Right, it's just, right. There's so many actors out there. Why why reuse the same right. ones? And so same with directors. Yeah. Well, oh, right. director is what I meant to say. Yeah. Not actors. But, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, it's fine. I I just didn't want to recycle, so it's yeah. no big deal if you do. 
No, and no. I love. Obviously, I just, this is your first time, Nick, too. So yeah, that's a fantastic pairing, Nick. Quentin Tarantino and Joaquin Phoenix. I would, I would see that movie right now. <laughs> uh, so my second is going to be. I'm slightly gonna have to piggyback off of what <laughs> Nick just said. I, I see, good. I see Joaquin Phoenix definitely, uh, as a, like one of just the most one of the most brilliant actors of our generation, and I think he should also work with someone whom I consider one of the best directors of our generation, and that is Christopher Nolan. I think Nolan and Phoenix would be perfect, perfect together. Um, I, I like I I just would I would eat that up. I think it would work so well. Uh, I want Hoyt Van uh, Cinema on as the the cinematographer as well. Um, I think I don't know what the movie would be. I don't care. <laughs> uh-huh. I think as long as you got Christopher Nolan and Joaquin Phoenix, like I, I feel like it wouldn't work like. You couldn't do another tenant with that with that pairing, yeah, but you God, could please, do please not another tenant, right? <laughs> but I feel yeah. like an Interstellar or something like you know, saying or oh God, what's the other one? Uh, Nathan, help me out. <laughs> Dark with what? Nolan? Yeah, Inception. Inception. Inception thank you. <laughs> something like that. I feel like would work really well with uh, Joaquin Phoenix. So that's my second pairing: Christopher Nolan and Joaquin. All right, Nathan, are we, at your, we yes. at your number one? We are at my number one. My number one last time uh, was Sam Rockwell and David Fincher. I think David Fincher is the master at writing adaptations from, from books, from real life events. Um, and Sam Rockwell, like, like Phoenix mentioned earlier, I think he's one of the most talented people in Hollywood. And that is a director actor pairing that I would get over the moon for. Um, this one I'm not as excited about, but of the pairings I came up with, this is my favorite of those. Um, I've talked a lot about these directors that I haven't seen a ton of, Barry Jenkins, Yorgos, Patty Jenkins, go in complete opposite direction. This is a director who I've seen all of. This is a director who Nick has seen all of. Um, it's also a director that I am not crazy about. This is a director that I'm like, uh, about. Um, <laughs> Nonetheless, this gets me excited. That's Wes Anderson. Mm. Um, I love Grand Budapest Hotel. I love Fantastic Mr. Fox. I think he's got a couple other good movies, but a majority of Wes Anderson's filmography, I am not a fan of. (laughs) Um, But seeing Fantastic Mr. Fox, seeing Grand Budapest, and I'm excited about French, French Dispatch. I wanted to pair him with someone who is just naturally funny because that's what Wes Anderson does. He's a comedian. And though there are so many people lined up to be in French Dispatch, though Wes Anderson is the king of Mm -hmm. getting big names to be cameos, I paired him with someone who I've always thought is naturally funny. Um, He has starred in a few comedies, um, but he's mostly known as a dramatic actor. Nicolas Cage? But, God, it's (laughs) worse. But... Um, this person is funny even in his dramatic roles and if you are thinking of Ryan Gosling you are correct Oh, wow. I think Wes Anderson and Ryan Gosling I would be there opening night I would clear <laughs> out my week to go see this Ryan Gosling is just so naturally funny in every movie I've seen not named Blade Runner 2049 he's not, he's not asked to do anything funny in that but even like La La Land, he's hilarious. And in The Nice Guys and Crazy Stupid Love, he's funny in those movies. He's just a funny guy. And Wes Anderson, probably the biggest comedic director right now. This pairing gets me very excited. So Wes Anderson and Ryan Gosling, I like it. I like it a lot. Cool, cool. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that, that I would be right there with you to see opening night <laughs> all right nick what you got all right so my number one um is another director where i've seen all their films um and one of my favorite directors um 
but that's not why I put him on on number one, obviously. Um, but this director is just so good at writing fantastic characters, at writing fantastic stories, whether it be Hugh Jackman and Jake Gyllenhaal in Prisoners, whether it's, while well, Nathan doesn't like it, Blade Runner 2049. <laughs> um, just, I think, fantastic stories, fantastic characters, and somebody who, when in the lead role, is always on their game, A1. Um, somebody who, you know, should have more best actor, and somebody who, that we've talked about a lot, and that's Leo DiCaprio. Mm. Um, I think these two pairings would be fantastic. Um, like Nathan said, I'd be there opening night um, both times <laughs> to see this movie. Um, so that is my number one. You said Leo and who? Uh, Denis Villeneuve. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> I like those. All right. Uh, so... My number one is going to be two people who I feel are on the up and up, uh, you know, just uh, getting good work and and doing good stuff. And I think actually would be an amazing pairing. Uh, the director uh, has only done six films, most of which have been shorts. Her first major film uh, was in 2019. And this guy who's been just killing it lately, doing great work. So I paired Alma Harrell, who's the director of Honey Boy, uh, 2019, starring Shia LaBeouf. Uh, I paired her with Jonathan Majors, who I think is excellent, just an excellent actor. I think Alma Harrell has just such a grasp of storytelling and I feel like she can tell any story, like regardless of who it's for, who it's from, the, pers the perspective, I think she's got it. I think these two would be magic together and little little sugar on top, uh, Natasha Breyer, who was the cinematographer for Honey Boy. I want her on this project as well. Uh, fantastic pairing, I think. Alma Harrell and Jonathan Majors would kill it. I don't even care what it's about. I think it'd be a great movie. <laughs> all right. So those are all of mine. I, I don't know about you guys, but I did have some extras that I wanted to let you guys know. Just you list guys, them off. Yeah. So I got yeah. Jordan Peele with Dakota Johnson. I think Dakota Johnson needs to do a horror movie. I think she'd be great with whatever Jordan Peele, Peele does. I paired Adam Driver with David Fincher, which I think would be an interesting mix. Uh, I also paired another actor on the rise, Kelvin Harrison Jr., with a director on the rise, Lee Winnell, who did The Invisible Man this year. Uh, I think that would be an interesting mix. I had, obviously, Ryan Coogler and John David Washington. Thank you for stealing that. <laughs> I paired Florence Pugh with Sofia Coppola. I think yeah. that would be a nice mix. I also had Noah Baumbach with Anna de Armas, I think. I don't know. I just think it would work. <laughs> um, and I paired Bong Joon-ho with Robert Pattinson. I think. Real. Yeah, Real I think what what Bong Joon-ho did with uh, Chris Evans in Snowpiercer, I think he could replicate with Robert Pattinson. Uh, probably in a slightly better movie. But yeah, I think Robert Pattinson would work there. And director Marielle Heller, who did A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood and Can You Ever Forgive Me, paired her with Daniel Kaluuya, who I think would be, is, is just excellent no matter what he does. I think it'd be an interesting mix. So those were all of mine. Wonderful. Yeah. Great choices. And I can't wait to do this again in like March. Yeah. <laughs> yeah all right. Sweet. So guys, let us know which pairing you like the most. Uh, it'll probably all be mine. I know. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, but let us know. You guys can follow us on Twitter at Film Code Pod and uh, leave us a review either on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts and let us know what you thought about our pairings. 
and uh, any other pairings that you guys might have that you want to see. Yeah.